Hello and welcome back to this channel. I'm Ruth and this is Fragrance of a Flower. Hope you're well, hope you're blessed and today is story time. So today's story I titled it, I liked him but Pastor D said no. And so through this experience I just want to share with you a story that I went through, an experience I went through and I just want you to like, comment, share, subscribe and share this video with your friends, with your family and also write a comment below if you also think in this story this was subtle signs of spiritual abuse or do you think I'm overreacting you know let's just share our thoughts what we think but remember like and subscribe you know so that Christian bloggers, Christian channels can be recognized when YouTube searches, you know, because this can help someone and even save, you know, someone from making decisions. So story goes. So before I get into why I think this was spiritual abuse, I'm going to tell you the background of this story and I'm going to use pseudo names. So I'm going to call Pastor Pastor D and I'm going to call the guy that I liked, Matthew, just to give real names to the situation. So starting first, you know, how did I meet Matthew? So I, me and Matthew have a mutual friend and, you know, I was thinking around this time to kill two birds with one stone. I might as well go to this seminar, this Christian seminar and also meet my friend because where the seminar was, you know, my friend lived in the area. So I thought, OK, that's great. Let me go to this Christian seminar and um, let me see my friend because it would be a really good opportunity. So, you know, I... Mary on my way I planned to stay there for I think it was five days but I think the seminar I don't know maybe the seminar was three days I can't remember how long but then I think I stayed it was almost a week so I can't remember the exact days I stayed so yeah what happened was as the story went on you know my friend she wasn't going to go to the seminar for some reason so she was like to me um you know I have a friend you know he can help with with you just being there because basically language was going to be a barrier people speak English but it's kind of a thing where just uh, like for example if you're around people that speak you know the Ghanaian language and they speak English if they're amongst Ghanaians they're most likely going to speak the Eng uh, the Ghanaian language instead of English so it's kind of the same thing so where I was going you know they all speak English but because they have that common ground of the language they know so they're going to speak that language and because I'm just pure speaking English I wasn't going to understand so my friend was like you know I'm not going to attend the seminars but I have a friend and you know he speaks English blah 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 so I was like okay fine so my friend's not going to be there but at least there's someone that I could probably talk to while I'm there so yes my friend picks me up you know I see her she's so nice she gives me some Chinese food and so we eat and then she um then after that we meet a lady who is going to drive me to the seminar so that's fine I get to see my friend which is lovely and then um yeah so then the lady drives me to the seminar so as we're driving yeah we're just talking I've never met this lady before either but it's just nice as well because when you're going to things you know like Christian seminar you're just like yeah you know everyone's my friend no everyone's but you get the gist like there's not really that um, nervousness per se if you have like a mutual uh, mutual connection but yeah so you can be shy but knowing that you're probably going to be in safe hands so yeah so we drive to the seminar and because it's at the lady's house so I'm guessing I'm early so I just say hello to everyone but because you know it, the language is a barrier I just pick up um, Ministry of Healing because I did travel with that book and I was like okay let me just read so I'm reading and I think as well I'm like you know seeing if they need any help but I think at that time they just said if the door if someone rings the door just open it so I was like okay so I was just reading shy girl just <laughs> reading her book and then you know the door bell came so I went downstairs and opened the door and there was Matthew so this was the first time I met Matthew I had heard about him because he's like a mutual friend but I didn't really think anything too deep of it I just so I met him for the first time I was like oh you must be Ruth and I was like yes and you know so that was it so um, I'm just saying this to say, you know, I wasn't thinking anything, so I didn't have anything in my mind. I just met Matthew and I thought, oh, wow, he looks, he looks good. He looks well. Um, he looks friendly as well. So I was like, okay, that's nice. So I went upstairs because I think Matthew had to put something away. So I went upstairs. 
um, and continued reading my book because I do have moments of like shyness. So I was like, okay. Because even though I knew he speak English, because of course he spoke to me in English, but I kept on, I read my book. Um, I read Ministry of Healing. And then a man was like, okay, Matthew basically speaks the language. So you can talk with him. So I was like, okay, but I was doing shy. I think I was shy and I think I was still reading. But it came to a point that the seminar was starting. And even though I, I knew, um, I think the person I knew was, oh, she probably came later, but I knew someone that speaks English, but she also speaks this language. So, and also there was going to be English speakers there. So I thought, I didn't really think of the thing of translating, but what happened is, you know, the man started to speak this language that I don't understand. So Matthew came and helped translate. And then also a lady, she came up to me and said something about my, a really nice compliment. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? So Matthew translated. So that's how I met him and ended up speaking to him because I needed someone to help me translate. Help me translate. Yeah, I needed someone to help me uh, with the translation so I could understand. So that's how I met Matthew and then ended up through the seminar. He ended up translating for me and also for the English speakers that were there. So that's basically how I met Matthew. And through that experience, I thought, oh, wow, he's a really nice guy. We had really good conversations. And, you know, I thought, oh, OK, he might be a potential in the sense I thought, OK, He's quite nice and he seems quite interested. I mean, like interested in sense of that like he's engaged in conversation and things like that. So even that, I just thought he would even be a good friend and stuff. So yeah, the days go on and it's just nice because we're talking about different things. I can see he's spiritual. So I'm like, okay, this is, you know, a good sign that he's spiritual as well. And we are able to have good conversations. So yeah, the seminar ends and then um, I get dropped off to a certain place and then um, I meet my friend. So uh, my friend has a friend as well. And Matthew basically knows all these people. So I go and meet these people and it's really nice. I spend time with my friend. And even though like through this time, I think, yeah, Matthew was there during this time. And we're just talking about spiritual things. I was like, wow, this is, I just felt like, wow, this is, I actually like this guy. But of course, it's just been a few days. So it's just like, calm down, Ruth. So yeah, so this is how I met Matthew. Having, I had a mutual friend and going to this seminar. So then fast forward, uh, I think three or four months later, I basically took up a project. And taking up this project meant that I had to be in a certain area, living in a certain area for um, just over two months. So I was doing something to do with mental health because that's like my background psychology. So, yeah, I do this project. And when I get to the place, you know, things kind of fell full through with the organization um, in terms of where I'm going to live, where I'm going to stay. So I end up, yeah, I end up not having a place. So my friend, the friend who I... Um, the friend who I was going to meet anyways, who didn't attend the seminar, she was like, um, you know, because at this time I was literally asking a lot of people and telling her about a situation because, you know, if you're friends, you tell people what you're going through as well. So, yeah, so I told her about the situation. She was asking, you know, how I've been. I was like, oh, this happened. So for like seven days, I had to stay in this place and I felt quite uncomfortable there. So I was just like... It basically, I was staying with, yeah, that's a whole nother story. I was staying with a stranger and, yeah, but it was different. So after this situation, she was like, oh, you know, I should probably ask Matthew because he knows people in that area. You know, it's an area he's definitely familiar with. So she was like, oh, do you have his number and stuff? I was like, yes, but I was a bit shy to ask. So I basically didn't ask. So she asked on my behalf and then I got um, Matthew's number. So long story short, um, I ended up, he d doesn't, he wasn't living in this area, by the way. So um, long story short, got in contact with Matthew's parents. And through this experience, I ended up staying with them during this time when I had the project. So I had projects in different parts. Um, I think I had three projects in different areas. So being able to be in an area that I don't know and then living with Matthew's parents was so helpful in the sense that they were able to help me to say, oh, this is where you go. This is where you catch the bus to go to this place and stuff. So it was really helpful as well. And also to get to know people from this area, because I believe that especially if you're working with like mental health 
and things that are quite vulnerable touchy subjects it's good to understand how like the demographic is around that area because you're more likely to um you're more like by knowing someone even like if you're preaching a sermon by knowing people you're able to connect with them so yeah so that's how it happened so i ended up staying with them I think even just over two months actually so from that experience I got to know Matthew's parents you know it wasn't anything you know like oh you know I like your son that's why I'm staying it was just like a situation happened and I ended up there so it was like providence just meeting Matthew those three months before and then you know being in a time where I needed help and then being able to seek help from his parents so that was a great experience so from that that's like the background of you know like in this guy and stuff and then you know <laughs> this is where like the story the background adds to the story so during this time as well while I'm in this area there is also another seminar and around this time you know I'm someone who like travels like I, I wouldn't mind to go up or down for like a seminar um, because I was I really like those types of things so that's what I was doing so around this time I knew there was going to be a seminar in this particular area I had to live in so around this time you know because I'm doing the mental health and around this time I think I had like a break because my thing was after this seminar not after this seminar after this project with mental health you know in this clinic and stuff in this community setting helping people I was thinking oh maybe afterwards I'll go to this seminar full time to maybe help to learn and just to um, yeah just to help to learn and because I liked it and because I knew the people so I thought why not they're in this area let me go but what happened is around this time I started to feel more convicted that maybe I shouldn't go so I was really feeling impressed that Lord you know maybe I shouldn't go and even looking back I can really see the Holy Spirit was actually leading me not to go full time because that like, things happen like I'm not saying because things happened, it was because I was supposed to go, like things happened where I met this family and it was just a blessed experience, you know, getting to know them, being able to, you know, sit with them, eat with them. And also, also through that connection, just being able to connect with people from, you know, high positions, not saying high position, but this man, you know, he basically owned that, um, owned the town, owned the... I don't know what to call it, probably town, the area. And he took a liking to me, not in a fancy way, but he just respect that I was coming back, you know, to this area to help people. So that was really nice connections that I had, you know, that really helped. And then also because of mental health, that is what I'm here for. I really started to see that in my Christian experience that it's very... <sighs> let me just word it this way some we can you know it's very important to study the word to you know learn to go to all these things but I was really seeing the need for practical work and I saw how even outside of work God was like connecting me to people who needed help in terms of mental health in terms of disorders they had so I was kind of getting the message from from God you know that it's time to tarry you know because if I go to this full-time place of course there'll be people that I can help but I didn't feel the need to go I kind of felt in my mind that the Holy Spirit was basically saying tarrying so because of this you know me tarrying in the area that I was and didn't go to the seminar um, you know I, I told the lady who was like kind of involved with everything I said you know um, I'm not going to go you know full time I'm not going to go full time I kind of believe and I explained the situation that you know I believe that these certain people that I've come across my work is not yet done so even though I'd finished in that community base and moved to something else I felt in my soul well as well I felt in my spirit let's say it that way that um that I was supposed to tarry and you know God did really show that it was the right thing to do even in that situation and looking back so from that you know I said I wasn't going to go and that was fine you know she didn't think anything of it so this is where Pastor D <laughs> comes in now so as I don't go you know Pastor D now tells this lady that you know this is strange, you know, that Ruth isn't coming, you know, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So she explained the situation. I'm guessing that, you know, she just feels that she should stay because there's a work that she has to do there. So, yeah, so I didn't hear any message from Pastor D about, you know, if he was that concerned, I kind of thought maybe he would message me or send me something that saying, oh, Ruth, she just want to see how you are. You know, is there anything going on? Um, so after that, I was like, okay, Ruth isn't going. But then I felt, you know, 
I'm not going to go, but it would be a bit bad mind to not see them since they're in my area. So what I did a day that I was free, I basically took a taxi there and saw them, said hello and stuff. And then afterwards, like it just changed. It went to, okay, Ruth is not going to like Ruth, you must come like by fire, by force, you must come. And then, you know, I was having notions, not directly from Pastor D at the time, it was now from this lady saying, you know, you have to come, it's the end of the world and you need to hear these messages. It's the end of the world, you need to hear these messages. And when I was getting messages like that, I started to feel like very anxious because God speaks to us in different ways, but I feel like God speaks to me through anxiety in the sense of, you know, if something isn't right, I, I, may, I may feel anxious like in a situation. So I really need to hear God and see what he's telling me. So when I was getting messages like, Ruth, you have to go, come, blah, blah, blah. I said, you know, if God, if I believe God has told me that I need to tarry because there's, there, my work here is unfinished in terms of like helping people mental health. And God really was impressing me around that time about just because it's spiritual doesn't mean that it's um it's the way that you should go and giving the example yes it's a christian seminar but god was basically telling me that i should tarry where i am because just because that is the most spiritual decision decision out of the two it doesn't mean that that's literally the way that god wants me to go so i really felt strongly impressed that i shouldn't go full time so after all those messages feeling so anxious i was like to myself you know okay let me Com let me like commit to like one day a week or see them you know when I'm free and stuff so I did that and um when I went it was just like wow my eyes just felt I just saw things spiritual like it's, that it wasn't well that you know but I kind of glanced it I thought okay maybe because I haven't seen them in a while you know it might just be that as well but things were off I could feel even though you know it was nice you know saying hello to people embracing people I felt like a coldness from Pastor D but then after I was like, okay, um, let me talk. So I, I said, okay, then I'll find out what this, this thing is about, why there's this element there. So I spoke to Pastor D and I think he forgot about us because I was going and it was late as well. And because I'm staying at someone's house, I don't want to be coming so late, you know, because it can be quite disrespectful. So yeah, and it was dark, unknown territory, but you know, being quite adventurous you know I, I didn't mind like I didn't really have a fear of traveling at night and stuff but yeah because of respect I was like okay you know I'm going past the day you know you said you want to talk but as a banter I was like no I don't want to talk so I guess I just already knew it was going to be a touchy subject because um he wasn't like I was the one that had to go back and say oh you know my camera focusing yeah I was the one that had to go back and say oh you know you want to talk and stuff so yeah we talked and we went and then the first thing that he mentioned was do you like Matthew and I was like what but no I was thinking in my head what and then it went straight away that said oh I can see that you are you know getting close with Matthew's family and I'm afraid that you know Matthew uh, family they're going to start suggesting Matthew to me like to to be like a potential whatever so I was just thinking okay this is just, let me just listen and see where this is going and then it turned to you know like comparing people and saying oh this couple they're just so fixated with marriage and we're living in the end times and they're just not focused blah 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 they just focus on their marriage and then he compared brought someone else and said oh this is what you should be doing just study 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 this you know don't be focused on marriage at this time um blah 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 don't be focused on marriage just focus on this you know because we're living in the last days so <laughs> i just thought okay and that's the thing you know when something comes about because something may be truth and something may be error you might not at that certain time had the alarm bells but I would say that was the second red flag so the first red flag was just the element of force I felt that I had to now attend the seminar even though I was convicted you know to to basically tarry and to help situation and I can really see that God's hand was there because even another experience where someone was going through something and me just being the point of reason you know to explain the situation because I had the background in that and that wouldn't have happened if I moved, you know, to the seminar. So full time would have been like living there and stuff. And the second red flag was this, like, 
just straight away like oh i'm hearing you're close to the family because i've never i never told him about me being you know friendly with them and i don't even i did never mentioned it but you just know you're always been watched it. and then that the second red flag is that experience of you know kind of bringing people in and then he started to bring people in of oh this person is falling off this person is going astray to kind of instill like this fear fear in me and then bring in like a couple who are together like who are thinking of marriage and stuff like that and I just thought in my head at the time this is strange but being I felt around that time I was definitely some type of I was definitely on a journey and I feel like God has made me definitely much sharper now but I was thinking about this time is this some type of manipulation because you say this guy is right and then and then the next day basically adding to the story um something happened um so it was just f friendly conversation so things were happy now so once i started to come <laughs> you know the atmosphere changed because it was kind of like yes yeah, she's coming now so the f the coldness kind of was gone but then i think the next time i met them um, a conversation happened about marriage because of this other guy who was obviously he was interesting but i was like this man is old <laughs> i was like no this man is old so yeah, so I was like, no. And then I think Matthew came up again. And I th the day before or whenever it was, I didn't explicitly say that I liked him. Um, so bear in mind, you know, Matthew doesn't know I like him or anything like that. It's just, um, I personally believe like sharing with people who you think are spiritual. Uh, <laughs> but so yeah, so I just, he, and because they asked me, cause I wouldn't share something like that premature if you've just met someone you don't really know that well i thought i knew that i got to know him during those few days but i wouldn't prematurely you know go and because i believe that i should be chased so i wouldn't explicitly say to matthew that i liked him so they knew so i i told them that day yes um you know i saw him as a potential and then after that pastor d literally his body changed it changed he went um a bit cold and he was just like wow there's something about him that i can't put my finger on and i was like okay you know because of that verse about seeking counsel on people but then it for me it just didn't seem right you know because if you're you have reservations of a person you must have like things that even for example me you know even though there's sometimes I can be in a way and I may not be able to explain it but express just say that you know I don't my spirit is not there or whatever but I kind of felt it was more deeper than that because um the explanation was just shallow that um basically they met this person and they were quiet on on the first day and I just thought this is some people are just like that sometimes like for me in the situation I described I was just reading because I was quite shy around that time so I didn't speak so it was just a weird situation so after that experience you know he was just like no the Matthew is not it's not um Matthew is not the way but well, I'm just saying Matthew's I can't remember the word he used he said there's something wrong so the other people I told they're like um they were like the people organizing it so they're all adults and stuff and they thought Matthew was fine but then over the time because of Pastor D's experience they thought Matthew was now a bit strange and things like that so it was just a weird whole situation and um yeah so I can probably even stop the story here so because I think I have just like five minutes ago on this camera but yeah so that's why th those are the red flags so the red flag was now Ruth must go to this meeting by fire by force and we know that through the word through the bible everyone must be convicted through their own self you could encourage and say you know this is a great meeting it may help you spiritually but you should never force an individual to basically um do something they don't want to do especially if they believe that god is calling them i'm just looking at the camera because i can see it's flashing and it might be time to go but then the second red flag was just that you know do you like this person this person's parents may like you and suggest you to this person then bring in examples of you know how thinking about marriage can take you away from the truth and the people that he was even describing they they were they were spiritual so it was just a bad example and then say you know when the last days you know marriage isn't a thing so it was just like really strange because I started to think about that verse that it says, you know, in the last days, people basically say that, you know, it's a bad thing to marry. And I put the verse there 
and even though I believe you should seek counsel definitely and you should be very cautious of like marriage and everything but sometimes people may use this especially in these last days as a way to manipulate because I personally believe that if you go into a relationship sometimes it may open your eyes to like you're on that you may be under spiritual abuse because for example when you're going into a relationship well for me i would not be just going in i'll be reasoning seeing you know how's this person so using your reasoning power and through that i maybe have been able to see that okay this is some funky thing i'm in you know these people uh, may not be following the way so it may have opened my eyes and I think as well maybe Matthew I, I didn't really know how Matthew was but maybe Matthew had an open mind I don't know and that would have made him feel like oh he's now lost me he's he's a he's a he's his faithful follower so, <laughs> so yeah so that's how I was seeing the situation that maybe this I kind of saw this as a very subtle 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 uh, ways of spiritual abuse so that was my story and I am also even thankful for that experience because that helped me you know in making decisions in the future it made me more sharper and it made me understand that you know there's not just abuse like emotional uh, sexual uh, neglect um, just other types of abuse but there is spiritual abuse and sometimes people can use their power on you because they know that you are quite naive and you know that if you were to go into a relationship it would open your eyes possibly to see the errors of their ways but even though um I, I don't think Matthew even knew I ever liked him or anything like that. But um, I'm just saying little situations like that really helped my eyes to be open. So hope you enjoyed this story time of what I thought was spiritual abuse. Leave your comments below what your thoughts were and share with me experience if you've had a similar experience of this situation. And I'll also just to add, I personally 100% do believe in counsel. You know, if I'm having a situation where I think someone's in, interested in me, my dad's really good with like relationship advice. So I always tell him and things like that. But this situation that I went through seemed very off. There was no background and, you know, we have to be if we're seeking counsel as well, yes, with the parents that we, we have may not be as spiritually sound um, that we would like them or, but we should make sure that the person giving us advice must be in prayer. And it shouldn't just be in a way for that person to have some type of hold and power over you. So yes, this was it. Hope you enjoyed the story time. And um, I'm just so grateful for these experiences and, Hope someone can learn something about the situation, but just be open. And I just want to read a verse actually from the Bible. Um, just to end this, I've got my Bible here. I think I've got like one minute, but uh, yeah, just to add. So Psalms chapter 10, verse 14. And just about, you know, that God sees and knows. We may be in a situation, but God sees and knows. And, you know, we shouldn't have guilt or feel sad that we've been through these situations, but God sees and knows. So uh, 10, 14, so Psalm chapter 10, verse 14, it says, Thou hast seen it, for thou hast beholdest mischief and spite, and require it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee, and thou art the helper of the fatherless. So God sees it, God knows, and God is going to be helping his people. It says in this con uh, context, you know, the poor and the fatherless. So whatever you're being through, God sees and knows, God understands. And there's another verse that comes to mind about how there is nothing hidden that won't be revealed. So whatever situation you're going through, don't be anxious to think, wow, is this it's what is going on in this situation. But remember that it will be revealed in its certain time. And God revealed to me that this wasn't of God. And I'm just so grateful because at God's appointed time, God will reveal the things that are hidden. So God bless, shalom, and see you in the next video. Comment below, subscribe, like, and share it with someone today. Bye.